Welcome to another episode of Normal Baseball Podcast. Today begins our first episode day of our, what we are going to call our Team Willbees. Ooh. All right, let's get into it. All right, what's going on? Welcome back to yet another Normal Baseball Podcast. I'm Alex Normal Dog. That's Lewis. And today we are starting our new series heading up to the 2022 MLB season called Our Willbies. Basically what this is going to be doing is we're going to be projecting teams and how they're going to go. The order, we're going to post two. We're going to hopefully post two a day. Um, Up to opening day, we're going in the order of record from good to bad i mean from bad to good last season and today we start out with the baltimore orioles so the baltimore orioles last year won 52 games they lost 110 they came last in the al east um obviously this year they're not projected to do much of the same but let's see let's see what's going to go on with them so we'll start with last year obviously last year they weren't good um but they did have a couple bright spots one being cedric mullins um, what did what, you think yeah. of Cedric Mullins last year? Absolute stud, to say the least. I mean, his play on the field was just uh, out of this world. Uh, very proud of what he did on a very lackluster Baltimore team. Uh, first 30-30 Oriole in franchise history, so that's just huge. Um a home run away from my Gary Sanchez, future MVP, in my mind. Um, great, great player, and he's so young, and with what the Orioles have building up, he might be a center point of their future. Yeah, obviously the Orioles, they're they're not good now, but they may be looking to be in the next couple of years, and I, I think the reluctancy to trade Cedric Mullins last year kind of shows that they're they believe they should be good in the next couple of years. But, yeah, Cedric yeah. Mullins, I mean, 30 for 30, exactly 30 for 30. Um, he had a 136 WRC+, plus, a 372 WOBA, two stats that I like, 5.7 war on a bad Orioles team. Um, he, he had a great season. He had an all-star season out of nowhere. No one really saw it coming. He stopped switch hitting, which was a big thing. Um he only went to the now he only bats left and it helped him a lot it helped him out a lot um yeah, he he's one of the players that absolutely performed so well yeah he's one of the players that if they're going to be good in the next couple of years he's going to be have to be a big part of that and he's going to have to keep it uh, keep it up yeah he i mean he what he did last season in 2021 he made it look so effortless that if that team ever got competitive and Cedric was still on the team he would be in MVP conversations. Yeah, and 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 the team loves him. And how could you not? Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's not much else to say. If he could follow that, if he could follow last season up with another similar one, um, they're going to be feeling really good about him. And especially with some of the guys they got coming into that that organization, he can be a big piece of that. And he'll be a veteran by the with, time that happens. Without a doubt. Um. They did make one big one signing, uh, Rugnet Odor. Rugi. Yankees legend. Yankees legend Rugnet Rugnet Odor. Odor, um, Signed him to a little contract. Um, He'll be. Little contract. He'll be himself. He'll be himself. You know. Um, That's all. That's all the really trade slash transactions they made. Um, This is interesting though. When you look at their roster, they only have one catcher. And that's Robinson Chirinos, not a not a oh, big wow. name catcher, and and they have a, a guy named named Adley Rushman sitting in the minor <laughs> leagues, the number two overall prospect, just ready to be called up, and they only have one catcher on their well, roster. Let's let's be real here between Adley Rushman and Bobby Wood Jr. on the Kansas City Royals, who is now the number one overall prospect. They're like one A and one B. You know, they are both out of this league talents. 
Uh, and I'm thinking that this might be the year where Adley Rutschman is a Babe League starter. Do you, do you think he starts opening day for the Orioles? I I would love to say yes, and my lineup that I have written down says that he is the opening day starter, but I think they'll wait till like the very end, basically, to call him up just because of service time manipulation. He obviously, you know... I don't know. If they call the him, CBA, they... They avoided service time manipulation. They really yeah, hit, hit that big they time. They didn't get rid of it, though. That's my thing. I don't know. I, I, I'm hopeful he'll be called up for opening day. I would love to see him start opening day. That would make a world of difference down there in Baltimore. Yeah. And, and, and I think the fans are going to be ecstatic if that happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be ecstatic about it, and I'm not even an Orioles fan. I, I'm... I'm. I will t- tune into Orioles opening day if if Adley is playing. I will. Yeah, as long as I'll watch his at bat. I'll watch his at bat, and then I'll <laughs> not watch. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I do not care after that. Um, but yeah, that's that's their bright spot in the organization. They have, if we want to keep talking prospects, they have Adley. They have Grayson Rodriguez, a uh, right-handed pitcher who's uh, supposed to be really good. Fourteen. 14- 20, in 2021, he had 14.1 strikeouts per nine, 5.1 hits per nine in double A and single A. I mean, he should great, be come up. He should prospect. come up pretty quickly. Um, he'll he be up this season. Factor. I think he'll be up this season, which is I great. I hope so. I mean, in my mind, I, I I will admit I did watch a little bit of his highlights. Obviously, that's just the best parts. But I mean, man, the kid has got some real stuff. It's mm-hmm. just exciting. And oh, sorry, um, and especially because they don't have that much pitching. Like it's not that they have any uh, huge pitching people. So yeah, no, no real big arms besides John Means, who did throw no hitter last year. John Means, but even then, he had a really bad second half, and and I feel like it's more a selective thing with him. So yeah. But we'll look at him as a positive. How's that? Yeah, I suppose we can. Uh, I'm interested to see how they do against the other teams in that division because they're going to be playing them a lot. Um, and that is the toughest fun. division in baseball, seeming to be. That in the NL East. But even then, four teams, four really good powerhouse teams in baseball, they're going to have to be playing them for more than half their season. So not fun when you look at that on paper. Um, not going to be easy, but I think that only makes their players better. I mean, especially if Adley I guess. can come up I don't really have hope. this season. I'm not. I don't think they're gonna. I think they're gonna. Well, we can get to that later. But uh, I'm not. I'm not thinking that they're gonna do anything special. They might. Adley oh, might no. do something. They also have Ryan Mountcastle, who's who was pretty good last year. Yeah, and I mean, of course, like you mentioned, they have Runetto Door, Yankees legend. Uh, hopefully, his number will be retired in all of baseball one day. I mean. I mean, just, they have some great players. Santander, Austin Hayes. I think they'll all do decent, but obviously in that division, decent is not going to cut it at all, and they're going to look like a a clown of that division. They're going to they're going to look like the puncher. Their guy. record the is going to their record's going to be worse than how their offense produces. Not their pitching. They their pitching will not their pitching will not hold up. Their offense might produce decently, like more than people have expected. Fair enough. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Um, we'll do. We'll do a couple, couple over unders here. Um, we'll do. We'll start with our first one. We'll just kind of stagger them throughout the episode. Um, over under for wins this season is sixty one point five. Do you think they'll be over or under? Hammering the under. Yeah, same. There. There's no way. There's no way in that division. I don't think they made it past 50. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I'd go that far. It's hard to be worse than they were this year. But we'll see. I, I, They're definitely not getting over 61.5 wins. No way they do. It's, it's hard to talk about the Orioles for like this long. They're just not good. Well, we talked about I mean... Adley. We talked about John Means. We talked about um, Cedric Mullins. Well, like, what do you... Well, we both agree that they're going to be under 61.5 wins. What what do you see their record as? I, I have my own record down here. Um, I'll go 
out of the blue. Um, 50, 52. I think they're going to get the same as this year. 52 Fair or 110. Enough. Why would you have? You had less than 50, I'm assuming. Yeah, I have a 48 and 114. Very, very bad. But you also have to remember that they play a lot of games against these AL East powerhouses. They are going to play the entire NL West. And honestly, I think they're the number 10 team in those two divisions. You know, I, I just don't think that they have enough to produce, sadly. Um, we did mention Adley Rutschman. I think he will be the bright spot along with Cedric Mullins from back for another year. Um, adding Rude Neto Door is big for them, not only because Rudy can grow back his beard and everything, but also he's just an outside guy able to come in and uh, just maybe set the tone of like, hey, yeah, we're going to be bad, but let's do it with some style. Like, let's have fun with it. Rudy has just always been a fun guy. I mean, he really expressed that to me personally with being with the Yankees. I watched him a lot more. He's just a fun guy. And I hope that he brings that energy that he had in the Yankee clubhouse last season over to Baltimore. Um, I mean, I guess they're going to lose, lose in style. I don't even know what that means. I get, I get yeah, the it's point. Like this light year. <laughs> I get the point, but like, I don't, I don't care how my team loses. If they're losing, I'm not happy. No, I I'm not gonna that. be like. I mean, I'm not gonna be like. Oh, we lost. At least Rugen Odor has a beard. Like, <laughs> like yeah, well, I didn't mean like only, what? Like, I'm not bananas here, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, the one thing that I want to touch on is uh, their outfield. We we've, we've talked about it plenty in our podcast episodes before. Uh, they're changing up left field a little bit. And one thing that I did notice in just watching a little bit of Adley Rutschman is that he is a switch hitter and he can hit for power on both sides. From the right side of the dish, he does pull the ball. Does that? Do you think that little wall hop and everything will play a big role in uh, what he's able to do if he is called up this season? Uh, I mean, if he's truly going to be that guy, I don't think it should bother him. Definitely agree with you. I still think, um, personally, for us as fans, it's going to get a little bit difficult to look at when we first see it. And I'm hoping that any player that steps on the field, whether or not they're an Oriole, can um, adjust to that properly. And the Orioles, actually, were very public about their offer to Carlos Correa. I'm very sad that he didn't go to who. Yeah, really, that would have been fun. They offered him, what, 10 years or something? 10 years, $300 million. It was less than he wanted, though. It was a nice stretch, but it, it would have been, been cool. It would have been cool. It, it would have been, been it would have been a, out of nowhere. And considering we know Correa wants to win, then he would have been there, and he would have turned into like a dinosaur with how long he would have been there. <laughs> Honestly, ten years at that age, at that point, would have been nothing. Too much, too much. <laughs> um, I was actually Is really gonna... shocked that they put that that offer in. I feel like that was just kind of a, like might as well i don't think that was serious i don't think that was anything serious it would have been a lot better if it did if it was serious you know i sadly we'll never know 100 because carlos Correa never signed there but um that's interesting i think the orioles do eventually go on their spending spree they do try to catch up to the rest of the al east I just don't think it'll be in this season or a couple seasons to come. I think they really are banking on Adley to come up and be, you know, a great catcher. I think they're banking on Cedric Mullins to continue to do his thing, as we mentioned earlier. And honestly, there are some pieces here that do have the potential to grow, like Anthony Santander, Ryan Mountcastle, uh, even Ramon Urias, who is very rarely talked about. Ramon Urias? Urias, yeah. Okay, sorry. Oh, that Urias. caught me. That caught me off guard. My apologies, but he's very rarely talked about, and honestly, he is a great. He is a good MLB player. I think that if he were in a different opportunity, his name would be a household name. He he can he can do it. Do you Obviously, really? Yeah, I'm, his stats probably don't show it, but that's just from me and the eye test. I'm not too much of an advanced stats guy, but. I think he he gives off that vibe and that feeling of being a 
a, a good player, not an all star, not I a World Series MVP one day, but I think he would be a very big contributor on another team, and I hope that it is the Orioles one day. I mean, a 111 OPS plus in 85 games this year. These stats aren't terrible. I mean, we'll see how he can do if he plays a full season. Um, yeah, which we all, I mean, I hope he does. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I like it, I guess. He's going to be in their infield. Obviously, they have Trey Mancini, who's probably going to be DHing a lot. He was obviously comeback player of the year. See if he can keep that up. Um, obviously, anything he does now is impressive considering what he's been through. Trey Mancini, yeah. just another thing to watch. Always like watching him play. He plays with energy, he loves what he does. Um, Thought of that. And I mean, that you said you mentioned it before that wall in in left field that they just put up. That brings us to our our second over under here. Um, the wall uh, over or under twenty home runs taken away for just the Orioles or for everybody? Any team. Give me the over. The Orioles pitching is sadly not up to par yet with the rest of the AL East. No, I. The, uh, don't think you understood. Ta- so how run. many how many home runs will the wall take away? So yeah, like they over, would be home over runs. And a half. So you think that twenty would twenty hits would be home runs if it was the the wall wasn't there if it was the same yes. as last year? Okay, because yeah. that didn't make sense with what you were talking about how the pitching is bad because that would mean that they are going to give up more home runs. Well. If you would let me finish. Uh, okay. So the pitching is bad, and Camden. I mean, we've, as both of us are Yankee fans, uh, we've seen it that the ball does travel in Camden. I just think that with how most players approach hitting now, especially what we've seen out of the Yankees camp and out of Red Sox camp, and I mean even the uh, Blue Jays camp. They're a lot more analytical driven than they have been in previous years, and they're more um, approached on what's the best outcome. And in Baltimore, with that short wall that once was there, th- there's no stats really on the bigger wall. They're going to try to, you know, get right square with the ball, you know, hit a line drive, get lucky, maybe have it go over that previous short wall. And I think now with it being pushed back a little bit, you can even get the far pop flies that would have landed in the seats one day are now just going to land on the warning track and be caught. So definitely give me the over. Yeah, I also picked the over. I think that wall, I mean, with any ballpark, we've, we've seen home runs barely get out at Camden. I feel like it's definitely going to happen more than 20 times. I mean, we've seen plenty of home run robberies of just right there in left field. Yeah. It's just like, it's that, and I think Detroit have like the two most notable left fields just because of how easy it is to take a home run away. But now Orioles Park is no more. I mean, Camden Yards is no more uh, with their big left field wall kind of matching their right field, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like a up, down. It's like the show, one of the show stadiums. Like yeah, it, you know, we haven't seen it fully yet. We've just seen pictures. But, yeah, that's just what it looks like. Yeah. All right. Um, I, we talked pretty much everything about the actual team itself there i have two more over under i have yeah two more over unders and then we could go with the team mvp prediction but we talked about these two guys cedric mullins over under 30 30 season again 30 homers 30 stolen bases oh i like the over on home runs under on nope it's uh, both it's both so if it's under on uh, one it's under on both shit Give me, I'll be brave. Give me, give me over on both. I also had over on both because I, I, you know what? I'm changing under. I think, I don't think he'll have uh, 30 homers again. I think he'll have 30 homers. I think he won't have as many stolen bases, honestly. So then that would be under. Well, no, I want the over homers though. No, it's both. It's a package deal. Yeah, I know. So I'm taking the over. So you think he'll have thirty home runs and thirty stolen bases again? Yes. Okay. But if I could, I if I could divide it, I'd take the over homers under on stolen bases. Okay. You better hope he doesn't hit the under on stolen bases, because then you lose the bet. Yeah, I know. All right. I hope not. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going with under good. just because I I'm rooting for him to do good, but thirty homers is a lot for a 
I don't know, it's just seemingly out of nowhere. So hopefully he can do it again. But yeah. then uh, Adley, we also talked about him. Over or under 82 games played? Ooh, that's a good number. I would have half the I season. I would have guessed that like 80 ish range. I'll be brave. You know what? Give me the over. Give me the over. Uh, I think he starts opening day. Just taking my picks at this point. I, I also picked the over. I think he'll he'll be up. Uh, well, if not, if not say, opening day, he'll be, he'll be up soon. And then to finish out this first episode of the, the Wilbies, um, who do you think the team MVP for the season is going to be? Um, I'm going to go with Adley Rutschman. Really? I really am. Uh, I think he's going to get called up early enough that he can make a serious impact. And depending on how many games he plays, could he even be a rookie of the year candidate? I hope so. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going Cedric Mullins again, just because this team is so bad. And obviously Cedric was their team MVP last year. He was such a bright spot and such a dark lineup. Uh, he, I think he has, he can more than more than well do it again. Yeah, without a doubt. So he's my pick for team MVP. And I think that rounds out this first episode. If you're an Orioles fan and you enjoyed or you disagreed with anything we said, um, keep in mind we're not Orioles fans. You probably know more about your team than we do. And that's just because we can't be diehard fans of every team because that's impossible. But um yeah. But yeah. And that should do it for the first for the first will be. Um, for the Baltimore Orioles, I believe next up is the Arizona Diamondbacks. That should be posted right after this one. So we'll see you in that one. And this was the first will be for the 2022 season. How do you think the Baltimore Orioles are going to be this 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 year in 2022? Let us know, and that that'll be it. And we'll we'll see you we'll see you in the next one. Go Orioles!